hour clock. The minute hand is four inches long and the hour hand is two inches long, right? So the short one is the hour hand. How fast is the distance between the tip of the minute hand and the tip of the hour hand changing at one o'clock? So let's draw a picture of a clock. So here's 12, 3, 1, 2. Okay, so I'm going to draw the snapshot in time first, which is usually against the rules, but I'm going to do it anyway. So at 1 o'clock, my hour hand's pointing directly at the 1, and my minute hand is pointing directly at the 12. It's not quite to scale. There we go. And this is um, 2, and this is 4. All right, so what I'm interested in is the rate of change between the tips of the hands. So I want to know the cha rate of change of that distance. So let's name that distance x. So I have a triangle. I know two sides, and I want to know something about that third side, right? So let's see. What do I know? What do I want? I don't know what I know. They didn't tell me I know anything, right? Usually they give you some kind of rate in that problem that you know. They didn't give me anything. But they told me what I want. I want to know how fast is the distance x changing. So I want dx dt at 1 p.m. <clears throat> yes? Um, well, at, no. At 1 o'clock is where they're asking me about. But but you're right. Those hands are, are moving, right? The rate of change of what? X? The rate of change is not constant. Yeah. Just think about sometimes the hour hand is in front of the minute hand, and sometimes they reverse. Hold on, hold on. So, so sometimes what the hour is in front of the minute, like I have here. Sometimes they're reversed. Sometimes the hour hand is behind the minute hand. So just that one fact means that sometimes dx dt is positive and sometimes it's negative. So we know it can't be constant. Some sort of weird sign function. Uh, close. You are on the right track. You are thinking trigonometry. Keep. Great. Okay. So we're thinking about the speed of the hands, right? The angular speed of the hands. All right, so I, I don't know what I know, but that's something that I know. I know I can figure out how fast the hands on a clock move. <clears throat> so let's look at the hour hand. Okay, so how long does it take the hour hand to make one complete circle around the clock? 12 hours, right. You think in minute hand. So it goes... Um, 2 pi radians in 12 hours, right? pi over 6 radians per hour, which makes sense, right? Because the angle between each number on the clock is pi over 6. Does that make sense, how I know that? It's because I took 2 pi total and divided by 12 hours, pi over 6. So the angle between the 12 and the 1, or the 1 and the 2, or the 2 and the 3 is always pi over 6. And the hour hand moves from the 12 to the 1 in one hour, pi over 6 radians per hour. But then the minute hand, how long does it take the minute hand to do one full cycle around the clock? An hour. So this is 2 pi radians in one hour for the minute hand. All right, so let's go back. Let's think um, a couple of minutes before 1 o'clock. 
The minute hand will be um, you know, just slightly before the 12, and the hour hand will be just a teeny bit to the left of where it is. <clears throat> so think about the angle between the two hands of the clock, right? Is it getting bigger or is it getting smaller? Smaller, yeah. And I can find out what that angle is by subtracting these two, well, I can find out how that angle is changing by subtracting those two speeds. So if I call this angle in here theta, then I know d theta dt. I know that the speed at which that angle is changing is the difference between the speeds of the two hands. Yeah. This theta. Oh, it, it doesn't matter, wherever, right? Wherever it is, because it's either between the two blue or the two pink, right? As these hands move around the clock, theta is changing, and it's measuring the angle between the two hands. It's going to be the difference between the speeds of the two hands, yeah. So, and I know that d theta dt is getting smaller. Sorry, I know theta is getting smaller, so d theta dt should be negative. So I will do the smaller one minus the bigger one. <clears throat> so what is that? This would be yes. Radians per hour. So that's how theta, the angle between my two hands, is changing. So I know d theta dt is negative 11 i over 6. OK, so I need to come up with some equation that can relate theta and x. And several people were on the trigonometry thought process. It's a triangle. We know um, an angle. We know two sides on either side, side angle side. What awesome formula can you use when you have side angle side of a triangle? Yes. Great. Law of cosines. Okay, so I'm going to draw my triangle here again. I have a four and a two theta. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the law of cosines, this is A, B, and C. It, it mimics the Pythagorean theorem, right? So you would start by writing 4 squared plus 2 squared equals x squared, right? It's just like the Pythagorean theorem. But then there's like a correction factor over here of 2AB cosine C. So this is going to be 2 times 2 times 4 times the cosine of theta. So now I have an equation that relates my two important variables, theta and x. The variable I know something about and the variable I want to know something about. So if I simplify this, I get 20 minus 16 cosine theta equals x squared. OK, good. So I've got my variables related to each other. I'm going to take DDT of both sides to introduce my rates. OK, so DDT of 20 is 0. This becomes um, positive 16 sine theta times d theta dt. And ddt of x squared becomes 2x times dx dt. Now we plug in the stuff we know at 1 p.m. Or hey, it doesn't matter, actually, right? At 1 o'clock, right? What is theta when the hour hand is at 12, is at 1, and the minute hand is at 12? 30 degrees or pi over 6. Yep. 
So this is going to be 16 times the sine of pi over 6 times d theta dt, which we calculated earlier to be negative 11 pi over 6 equals 2x. Ooh, what is the length of x at 1 o'clock? I'm going to have to use the law of cosines. I'm going to have to figure it out. I'm going to make a theta, make my theta pi over 6, solve for the x. And I'm just going to tell you what it is because we're running out of time. 2.48. At 1 o'clock, theta is pi over 6, and x is 2.48, approximately. So then I can plug that in. 2 times 2.48 times dx dt, and just solve for dx dt. Mode. Okay, I'm in radian mode. Good. So I'm just going to do 16 times the sine of pi over 6. I'm getting a decimal anyway, so I might as well just have the calculator do it for me. Times negative 11 pi over 6. And then I have to do that divided by 2 times 2.48. And I get negative 9.28. Negative 9.29. And x was measured in inches. So, yeah, inches per hour. All my time was being done in hours. <laughs>